Well, thanks for coming. Uh, just a uh, you know quick announcement, a uh, little bit about where we're going to go, and uh, you know starting today, or actually starting this morning and last night, getting going, and uh, a few question and answer. But uh, for the most part, uh, thanks to my fellow caucus mates in, in particular, uh, and Randy and uh, exec board members for not only welcoming me on board, but uh, a great discussion Randy uh, and I had during the, the campaign. Uh, the last couple of weeks, uh, we got to know a lot of our fellow caucus mates a lot better than, uh, <laughs> than probably most of us had known, and uh, a lot about each other that we probably hadn't known. And uh, some of the folks I've been in the house with for uh, seven years, and actually Maury Lanning I've known since 1995. So uh, it's always good to get to know your fellow caucus mates, and you think the amount of time we spend down here together would be. Uh, we know a lot of each other, but uh, it was a great conversation. Um, but going forward, you know, this is uh, what we're going to focus on is what we've been focusing on, uh, doing a little bit better with a little bit less uh, fiscal responsibility, bringing some sanity back to government. Uh, I think for far too long, uh, folks out have been a little leery of uh, what's happening out in D.C. We've bought a car company, we've bought a couple of banks and an insurance company, and uh, the American voter, the Minnesota taxpayer, is looking at that and saying, Something just doesn't feel quite right about that. So bringing a little bit of fiscal sanity and then living within our means just like business owners, just like families have had to do. Uh, both my neighbors on each side of me and the, in, my, in my neighborhood have had their, not only their budgets cut at work, but also their wages cut. So, you know, living, they've had to make do with a little bit less. Government needs to live within its means. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, carrying forward some of the opportunities we offered uh, last fall, when it, or last spring, excuse me, with uh, alternatives, some new ideas, whether it be Got Wealth on health care, whether it be Randy and, and Carol with some of the education initiatives, but offering those solutions, offering positive solutions as a way to help uh, move the ball forward, but also to, to help Minnesotans see uh, you know, another alternative or a different side of, uh, of the caucus. So that's about it. I, we're, uh, <laughs> we're all kind of drinking out of the fire hydrant today, so just to say hi. And if you have any questions for, uh, for me or for the group as well. So no major changes from the way Representative Seifert ran the caucus? You know, there will be style changes. You know, just uh, uh, one of the things we talked about during the the, uh, the debate was, you know, getting all 47 members involved. Um, and uh, Carol and I actually talked about this for quite a quite a long time, uh, asking members, what would you do to help the caucus get to 70 members? What do you think you could offer that you haven't offered yet, or nobody, someone hasn't asked you to do? What do you think you could offer up as uh, as help to us getting us to 70 members? So. Uh, I think that would maybe, I don't know if it's a style change or just a, a, you know, a new way to do things or a, a, an old way that uh, in the past we'd worked uh, you know, in some of the other offices I've served in our organizations. Ask what you think you can do to help us move the ball forward. And I understand yesterday one of the questions that you all were asked was to list 10 seats that you think are capable. What were those 10? <laughs> Uh, you know, there's all kinds of opportunities all around the metropolitan area. <laughs> there's ten in the rural area and ten in the metro. <laughs> you know, there's uh, obviously there's a few seats that uh, probably traditionally would have gone to a Republican, uh, maybe had a, a higher McCain percentage than uh, maybe an Obama percentage. Uh, those aren't those are no great secrets. Anybody can go look up the abstracts and see where they were. Uh, and then, uh, quite honestly, finding good candidates. You know, draft like the Vikings do. You, you pick the best player available. Maybe not the first one that uh, raises his hand and asks to, or she asks to serve, but uh, finding someone who best, best fits the district and not having a cookie cutter approach. Mr. Leader, are you going to endorse someone in the governor's race? I mean, how are you going to handle having several candidates in your caucus? Well, I think just about it. Nobody up here is running, so we're going to have to give a lot less speeches. You know, <laughs> we're going to watch uh, both sides of the aisle. And, and no, I'm not going to uh, you know, pick anybody. I don't know that we have all the candidates in the race yet. You know, I. I think there's the well, there's three different levels: filed and announced, uh, filed intentions, and then have been talked about. So until we get the uh, the three lists down to one list, I, I think it'd be premature. And like one of the things Randy and I found, uh, even our freshmen have figured out that uh, <laughs> when we were asking them for endorsements, they said, you know, based on the candidates, I'm going to listen to the debate and then I'll make my decision once we get there. So I, I, I think it's going to be an epidemic. And uh, we've got a great bunch, bunch of candidates. Obviously, we're, we're more prone to the House candidates because, you know, quite frankly, they're probably a step above some of the other candidates just because the, the House was where the action was. You know, that's where the debate was. That's where a lot of the, the amendments, that's where a lot of the ideas came from. Uh, Senate as well, but uh, you know you're in more active situations than maybe some people who've been out of politics for a while. But uh, there's a lot of history. There's a lot of great candidates on our side. I would say some that are you know qualified on the other side, but uh, the vast majority of the good candidates are on the Republican side, and uh, a lot of leadership, a lot of years of experience, and some new ideas too. Mr. Minority Leader, yesterday the outgoing leader said the chief job when you have to hit the ground running on recruiting and raising money. Do you have any history or record of raising money, 
big money <laughs> beyond just your seat and recruiting candidates. Uh, yeah, actually, I do. Yeah, uh, I've worked on uh, four statewide campaigns uh, in two different states. Uh, you know, I work with folks in Washington D.C. at the Senatorial Committee, at the RNC, at the uh, Congressional Committee, but. Um, working on a Senate race for Senator Grahams or Coleman, uh, you know, you wear many hats on a campaign. Uh, some you don't want to wear, but others you uh, <laughs> are thrust upon you. Uh, my one of my very first jobs on a campaign was to do small dollar fundraising, and uh, that was ten dollars a ticket. So I, I not only had the the low end, but also uh, working with some of the uh, folks at the higher end and uh, putting together a proposal to, to let those folks. A lot of people were looking at for, for donations are business people and. You know, letting them know here's what we're here's what we're about here's what we're selling or what we're offering, and uh, here's how we'd like you to help. And so, absolutely positively. And as far as candidate recruitment, uh, you bet. Uh, I got a, an email from a former classmate who's up in Moorhead, who uh, I'm going to meet with next week. Uh, she uh, run for city council. Was thinking about running for city council, but would like to talk. Obviously, she's uh, not going to run against Maury Lanning, but uh, in that area, you know, a, a candidate in the future, you know, something down the road. So, yeah, those things have already started. How many seats do you hope to fill? You know, the uh, yeah, all of them, <laughs> except for the Iron Range, Minneapolis, and St. Paul. That's, you know, uh, no, you know, honestly, I don't think you can say right now. Uh, this 2009 has a lot of a feel like 1993. You know, if you'd ask people in May of '93, you know, do you think Newt Gingrich would be speaker? They probably would have laughed you out of the room. But by June of 2000 or 1994. It was a pretty serious discussion, and uh, you know I think the nationalization we saw in 2006 could also come back in 2010, and we'll see a lot of that. Uh, you know, the Washington politics, just because it's literally dominating every single news cycle, it is going to be you know front and for front and foremost in a lot of people's minds. And uh, even though we'd like to make a difference uh, when you're talking about that much money and that much media content, it's hard for us to compete. So we're going to be uh, a little bit at the disposal of the national races. And of course, the gubernatorial race here in the state. Did age or youth come up? The counterparts on the Democratic side are definitely younger. Was that an asset for you, your age, or a detriment? <laughs> <laughs> my, my, I was never going to let Randy's youth and exuberance get in the way of me running for office. <laughs> No, I, I, I think honestly we had, a, we had a great debate and Randy and I actually had a lot of the same ideas. We talked about a lot of the same things, uh, getting more people, you know, the, the, the phrase I guess I use more often than that was the 47 member rowing team. You know, everybody's going to grab an oar, everybody's going to do something in the caucus. We're going to ask you what you think you could help with, but then we're also going to ask you to do something that maybe you haven't been asked to do in the past. And that's not a different style. I just I was a football coach, and you know, you can have an Adrian Peterson on the, uh, <laughs> in the backfield, but if you don't have five guys blocking them, in the front, he's just a guy with the ball. And that's uh, honestly what we're going to do is ask everybody to get in, pitch in, no matter what. Our, even our freshmen, you know, they won an election. They've proven that they can do what some other candidates that, you know, we ran didn't do. So they can contribute, whether it's, you know, helping out a, another freshman in their area, whether it's, uh, you know, explaining what door knocking is really like, uh, you know, <laughs> being really honest about how what, what it takes in the summer or in the fall to do this. But uh, I think that's one of the things we're going to talk about uh, going forward is also, and, and you know maybe because the the election cycles have gotten longer now, especially after the last one, uh, starting earlier. I, I think that's honestly what we need to do, especially with the competition we're going to have around the state. But how about more broadly? I guess the Republican Party nationally has been talking about finding new faces. Do you think you represent one of those new, fresher faces for the party? Well, thank you. I'll give you the five dollars for the fresh face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know I, the, I would say the one thing that uh, I do represent in the suburbs is you know you, you look around at your neighbors and. I'm, you know, if you check the demographics and the statistics, I am a, a representative, but also a representation of my district. You know, it's about 30, 38 to 42 years old, 2.5 kids, a black lab in most cases. If you door knock, uh, <laughs> almost at every house. <laughs> but uh, I think that's a represent, and that's what we're going to look for also in in our candidates, in in the people we're going to ask to to run with us in the future, is that they not only fit the district, but they're a representation of the district as well. What about your leadership team? Have you? Pick the people what you want. How 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 are you going to do that? Well, they're still here. We're not going to. You know, the the only position that was resigned was Marty, and you know, I'm filling for Marty. Everybody else, Carol and Randy, and the other members of the exec board are, are going to stay with us. We're going to keep that continuity. We're going to keep going. Uh, it wasn't a referendum on the you know the, the exec board or the style. It was just uh, Marty stepping down to. I think he's in that second or third list of. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it, but I haven't declared yet. So. 
yeah, I know we work really well together, and you know, a lot of great ideas have come out of the exec board this year that have been different from in the past, and had a, a little bit different, uh, you know, opportunity in serving as a member on the exec board or, or as assistant majority leader and minority leader. So, I've seen it from both sides, and you know, you, you learn a lot in any bad situation. You learn something, and being a minority for a few years has taught us some things, and learned a little bit more about bills and uh, studied them a little bit more. So, we're a little bit better educated, a little bit more hungry now, and. I think that's exactly what we need to take back. Uh, I'd say 70 seats. It would be what our goal would be if we get to 65 or 68. That'd be great. But 70 seats will be our, our, our target. So 70 seats next year. Do you think you can pick up? Total or add 70? <laughs> <laughs> I was told there. I was told there'd be no math. No. Uh, I, I'd say you know our goal. You have to have a goal. Our goal is 68 to 70 Is that seats. Possible? Anything's possible. Is it probable? I don't know. It's a, it, a year from now is a long time. And like I said, in 1993, I went back and read some of the articles. And some of the commentary from uh, writers around the country, conservative, liberal aside, would, would laugh at it. I mean, they were, you know, even some of the Republican or conservative writers were pretty brutal on uh, Speaker Gingrich. You know, that wasn't, <laughs> wasn't what I call love fest. They were pretty vicious to him saying, no, who are you kidding? You, you, know, you guys aren't going to be in power for another decade. So uh, anything's possible. And how is the caucus doing financially? Well, uh, that yeah, financial reports are available for you guys to look at. Um, I think we're on par or really close to our goals. Um, we're going to always look to exceed, you know meet and exceed our goals going forward. Um, you know, I think with uh, the number of candidates that we're going to have in the race, it's going to be a very very competitive market out there. Uh, the one thing we bring is as an advantage is we've you know we've proven we can uh, do it. We've proven we can uh, not only handle ourselves on the floor but represent the people who are uh, asking us to help them. And you also you're going to do it without the uh, refund program, which Republicans have actually traditionally done better at than than Democrats. So how much of a challenge will that be going forward? You know, uh, quite honestly, we've had candidates that uh, have chosen not to accept it, have actually raised the same, if not more, uh, you know, after not using the program. So it's not as if it's a um, probably an untested theory. You know, can you raise money without the PCR program? And, Working on uh, federal races—that's how you know—that's how we do it all. Or we've done it in the past all the time. So I don't think it's necessarily. Uh, I'd say for incumbents who've got an established base that you know traditionally turn that over to them, it's maybe a, a disadvantage for them. But uh, you know, I think for candidates, and if you're if you're selling a good message, if you've got a uh, an aggressive campaign plan, that's exactly what you should be doing. You made two references to the Minnesota Vikings, I noticed. Uh, what kind of stadium debate are you expecting next session, and what, what are you in the caucus willing to support? You know, I, I think in tough economic times, uh, you know, no offense to the Vikings, and the, the reference was if Brett Favre can be, you know, quarterback of the Vikings, I guess Zellers can be minority leader, right? You know, <laughs> anything's possible, but uh, honestly, I don't think, uh, you know, the stadium debates and stadium uh, proposals right now. I, I'm, I'm going to do all I can to make sure the Vikings stay. I love watching them. I love uh, you know our chances this year, especially now we got a great running back, a good line, and a proven quarterback. But uh, I don't think uh, I don't think they're going to bring a proposal. But they've proven us wrong many times before. I just don't think stadiums are going to be something we'll be able to address next year. Kind of what kind of working relationship do you expect to have with the speaker and leader Seifert? Oh, leader Seifert or oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah. You're making the mistake as well. Uh, you know, I, I, I served on Tony with, uh, when we were in uh, Commerce together when you know Tim Wilkin was uh, was the chair. So uh, we've known each other for a long time, and Speaker Kelleher the same. You know, we worked on some projects from Minneapolis together. Uh, as a as a farm kid too, you know, she understands the you know the work ethic and what we're doing. So I look forward to working with them. We've worked together in the past, just been a different role this time. Nails. Could you contrast uh, your style with Representative Seifert's, like uh, personality-wise? He's taller. <laughs> no, um, it, Marty's. Uh, you know, <laughs> Marty's Marty. I, I. I don't know. I, I don't think I'll come up with what the far left hand knows with the left hand, or the you know, <laughs> and the chicken and the egg thing still confuses me. But you know, uh, pro pro beef, but anti hamburger. I, I don't know. I. I <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, I, I try, try to keep it. You know, it, I, I'm, I'd say, you know, if anything, uh, being a, a coach or being in, you know, kind of team settings, I think that's what I'll, I'm going to ask uh, more of our, our folks. And, and again, going to them and asking them. Um, I'm not running for anything else, which in our caucus is kind of a unique thing these days. Uh, <laughs> there's still two more offices, out, statewide offices out there that don't have uh, candidates running. So maybe some of those candidates will go to the other offices. But uh, I'm not uh, not running for anything else. Uh, Congressman Paulson's my congressman. So all those questions we uh, <laughs> we got asked in, in in detail yesterday, so 
Uh, I'm running to, you know, God willing, be the speaker or the majority leader one day, and that's what we're going to focus on, getting all of our 47 guys, men and women, reelected and adding, uh, you know, a couple dozen seats. Are you going to be in front of the cameras as much, or are you going to be encouraging your members to go out more often? It, uh, you know, honestly, uh, both. Uh, you know, I'm going to make sure... Uh, We've got a, some really great people that have not had a, maybe, a, I wouldn't say a chance, but have not uh, been asked to take some of those. And those are some of the things that maybe are a little bit out of their comfort zone. You know, giving a speech at the district convention, you know, obviously Randy's had that opportunity and done a great job. But, you know, maybe asking some of our uh, newer members to speak at the, you know, Mr. Torkelson over here uh, speaking at his congressional district candidate on our behalf, you know, so that we've got a, a great farm team right now, but a lot of that's been driven by the personalities. I think we need to have that so that if it is that chance comes up and uh, Representative Torkelson wants to make the leap to Congress, it's his choice and not just who's been out there the most. And I, I think that's a great way to build the farm team. That's what we're going to try to do. How involved do you expect to be in end of session negotiations and even in the interim, the LAC, we've noted there aren't Republicans sitting on there. Do you want to get a seat at the table there? No, that's fine. I, I, I'd be happy to let the people who are negotiating there. Um, you know, obviously, whatever we can do from the health standpoint, working with Margaret and, of course, the governor's office. You know, uh, I've been, like I said, been in that situation before, being on the exec board. You know, both the majority and the minority. So, uh, I understand the role that you can play, and I'll be happy to help the governor's office and and working with the Senate as well. We're going to have a, a close working relationship with Senator Senjum as well, and uh, with the Senate caucus because they're all. You know, we're all going to be out there next year. We're going to start that relationship now. Have you talked to the governor since last night? No, I have not. I didn't talk to my wife or my mom either, though, so I'm in trouble with a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> my wife fell asleep, but my mom I didn't get shot. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm probably uh, I left a message for him, and he left a message back for me, so we just missed each other. But I'm going to talk to him uh, actually at lunch hour, I'm sure. You haven't told your mother that you wanted to talk No, I did, just not last night. And my wife found out from you guys uh, before. <laughs> actually, some of our caucus members found out from you guys yeah. before we did, so... The walls have ears, but you know, uh, the governor's uh, sent along his wishes, and, and so does Speaker Kelleher. So. How do you expect to get in some of the people involved who don't regularly attend your caucus meetings? Ask. Just ask. Yep. Have you done that yet? Yeah. And, and we're going to have... Uh, what have they said? You know, it, every caucus is an opportunity for everybody to come participate, you know. Uh, however you feel like you can participate, maybe you come in and offer, maybe they stay for 10 minutes, maybe they stay for the whole time, but asking people and continue to ask them and, uh, you know, in a nice way, I think I can be pretty persuasive and if but still students choose not to, that's fine too, but everybody's been involved in their caucus, whether or not they attend meetings or not, that's, you guys care about that, but most other people don't, so everybody's going to participate in their own way. We're going to have 47 man, man and women, man and woman rowing team from here on out and they're going to do a great job. Did you row in college? That's your like third row. Of <laughs> no, I didn't, and I don't really know where it came from. But <laughs> the uh, you know, the row in the boat is uh, you know maybe that's what it was. Reagan, was, my daughter was singing Michael Roll the Bush Shore, but no, I, it's you know then football's you know because as a coach and played that's always the thing. But you know if everybody's you, when it, when you are rowing a boat, if somebody's not rowing, you can tell. And we're gonna have all forty-seven hands on deck. Do you think that your Cox is going to be under more pressure next year to on the veto issue, on upholding vetoes, um, if the budget picture doesn't get any better and the governor and the Democrats don't shift off their positions? You know, it, it's really too hard to tell. You know, we don't know what the national economy is going to do. The state economy has actually looked better than the national economic picture. So I think we're, you know, maybe coming out of it sooner or leveling off a little bit sooner than the national economy. But... Uh, that's the other thing I'm not. I'm not an economist. I uh, don't even try to play one or a lawyer here. I, it, I think it'll depend a lot on that. Uh, I think some of the solutions we've offered, you know, Representative Gottwald, uh, Representative Dean on some of the health care stuff, some of those solutions could help a lot, uh, whether it's a federal waiver for GMAC or some of the education reforms that we've put up. I think those things will be offered again, and we'll probably improve upon those ideas. But uh, I think it's really too, too early to tell, especially in the economic picture. Since you're a former... Um, communications person <clears throat> wondering if you're going to continue to have hold secret caucus meetings you're going to open them up like they were in the old days uh, you know I'm going to leave that to the other 46 members to decide together you know I, I, I've heard about that and uh, you know we have uh, when we have our caucus meetings we have some of the pages come in sometimes we have visitors come in so it's not as if we're uh, you know locked down in a room but we'll let the caucus members decide that you know you don't have an opinion on it Whatever our, whatever the rest of the 46 have, that's my opinion as well. Is that, that, is that leadership? 
I, well, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I can give my two cents, but I, I think that's something that uh, the whole caucus needs to decide. And there, there are some that don't want uh, to do that, but uh, we haven't done it in my term here, so it's not something I've been used to. So I just, we, I don't, you know, that's something I'm front and foremost for me. Is that how you're going to make decisions? Let let the caucus make the decisions, or are you going to make decisions? Oh no, I'll make decisions. And any good leader, you make a decision, then you do, uh, he asks people to follow you. I think Norm Coleman said, uh, leader without followers is just a guy taking a walk. Well, I don't plan on taking any walks. I want to have lots of folks working with us. And if you ask for their involvement, uh, I've found that in a lot of cases, people are willing to say yes, and thank you for asking. Any of these guys? Especially Hoppy. He adores the media light. Yeah. All right, well, thanks, guys. Appreciate thanks. it.